Hey folks, we're going to do a couple quick videos on some shop up update stuff for the summer. My father-in-law Gary came to visit for a week and we got a lot done around the shop just taking care of tools and equipment and uh, the space. So um, this first video I'm going to show you these two rooms that you don't normally get to see. Uh, the first is this um, little metalworking sharpening room and then we'll go outside to the shed. Um, and forgive that it's going to be a little noisy in the video today. I've got all the doors and windows open and the kids are playing outside. Uh, it's just too hot to close it all up. So, um, yeah, uh, just a second. Okay, so in the back corner of the shop here, there's this little bump out or lean to that the previous owner built. Um, they intended to put their um, air compressor back here and they never got around to it. I thought I'd use it for compressor and dust collector too, but those seem to be better out in the main room. So, this room has been dedicated to working on metal stuff and for sharpening and some storage of equipment. So um, mainly for sharpening, what we use is over here on this side. Um, I've got a little cabinet here with my hand water stones that I do there and all the jigs and sharpening equipment for hand stuff is all in there. Um, got uh, this little belt grinder, an old Rockwell belt grinder. Uh, this grinder is for lathe tools, so it's set up pretty much just for that. Um, and a little belt grinder. And my father-in-law um, helped me with this. When it came, it was always spun the wrong direction and had some other problems. So he uh, flipped the motor direction around and got that going for me. Um, and then the other thing that needs to be done um, a fair bit for me is I need to cut brass, plastic, and bone for brass for um, the banjos and plastic for templates and things and bone for nuts and saddles. So this is your normal old Delta wood, uh, woodworking bandsaw, um, but with the right blade at the normal speed, you can cut those materials. I wouldn't try to cut steel with this at this speed, but brass, it works great. So I got this from a friend of mine up in Seattle and um, got it adjusted, so I pretty much just use it for brass. Um, this grinder, uh, I use this for the um, some of my lathe cutters and general grinding. I've got a wire wheel for cleaning stuff up. Um, a little buffing machine right here for brass parts or for whatever we need. And there's a little horizontal metal cutting bandsaw in here. So this is kind of a lot of equipment just to keep in one spot, a small spot. But I make such small things, it's okay. And enough of these things are on wheels that I seem to be doing okay. Um, you know, then back here there's storage and equipment and lots of parts for machines and motors and just kind of little rat hole stuff. Um, vacuum just for the um, grinders so we don't breathe the dust. So, oh, and then um, little things that kind of connect to the metalworking stuff is uh, I've got a couple of vices out here for holding brass parts and other stuff. Um, can do some soldering if we want to around here. Um, and I got this cool little anvil from my friend Lausanne, old hammers and anvil. Use that for peening things once in a while or just random stuff. It's pretty nice. Okay, so let's head out to the shed. So as we go out the overhead door to the sh of the shop and turn right, we come out to our little woodshed out here. Um, I needed this for lawn equipment and that sort of stuff and some bikes, but also to store wood that was either bigger than I was ready to mill or stuff that needs to dry for another year or just to get things acclimated ahead of time. Um, I got this building here in Oregon. It's made from Oregon wood in Oregon. Um, I chose to get it instead of like a Home Depot shed because of that. Um, and it's pretty nice. Uh, Henry and I found these um, strip lights by the side of the road for free. We put those in. And then we've got my original bench in here. Occasionally we have little projects that work out here. A couple of saw benches and a little space heater if we need it. Um, and yeah, so how it's organized at the moment is up here is all mahogany and walnut, more uh, thicker walnut planks in there for banjos. I've got a ton of this um, salvaged maple um, that I'll tell you guys more about later. It's um, from an old piece of um, oak processing equipment uh, that we got in Portland. Um, got a ton of oak over there, fir and hemlock up there for necks and then all kinds of random stuff up here. These are either pieces that are maybe, a lot of this stuff is maybe not destined to be ukulele or banjo stuff, but it's just fine to have around. You know, pine for making boxes and shelves and furniture and and whatever. So uh, anyway, it's nice to have this spot out here, even though I have to share it with my other equipment. Um, thanks again to my father-in-law who also helped me organize all this stuff. Got the generator running too. 
So, and I still have plenty more room in here to stash more wood, which I like. Um, it's nice to have it out here in big chunks and then be able to just cut it up for smaller when we get inside. Okay, thanks. Okay, as we come into the main uh, first shop room, this is the one without machines in it. Um, gets, it's where we do the finish, assembly, and setup of instruments, repair work. Nicole has a bench, Henry has a bench. Um, we also have lots of storage for cases in here. We do side bending, go bar deck. There is a little disc grinder to, grinder to do nuts and saddles over there. Also, lots of photos, videos, um, and rehearsals happen in this room and recording. Um, changes that are pretty recent is that we picked up this old printer's desk. It's got a st um, like a stone marble top on it. So, I've, and I've been interested in printmaking recently, so we've been messing around with that, just kind of doing art in, over on this side. And this has also been um, kind of like my office. Uh, still doing leather work on this bench, although Henry's taken it over recently for Legos. So that's okay. We'll let him do that in the summertime. And then the only other changes coming up soon is these two benches. I'm going to consolidate the storage, get rid of one, and I'm working on a new cabinet maker's bench, cabinet maker style bench for over in here, which I'm making from my friend Lizanne's salvaged maple. More on that later. Um, yeah, so this is the main non-dusty room. And then when we walk in here, this is the main machine room and bench room. Uh, it's a little noisy because I've got the shop doors open, but it's hot out. So um, some updates on this region. Um, this is still where we're keeping track of each a couple months worth of instrument orders, keeping all the parts organized. Um, and then recently at my main hand tool bench over here, I made this new hand tool cabinet that's from one of the Charles Hayward plans made out of all oak and maple. It's pretty fun to try to fit it all in. It's got some kind of sloyd details to it. Lots of little things that I just carved with my knife to fit in there. So that's been fun. Um, picked up a little metal fabricators table uh, for when I, I'm kind of thinking about learning to do some welding. Um, and then of course we can do all the soldering and stuff for brass on that. Um, and then uh, this is the, what will be the cabinet maker's bench I'm putting in the other room, just waiting to bring home the maple for the top. So it's all pretty much made except for the heavy top. It's all made from salvaged maple. I'll tell you about that later. Um, so yeah, got the lathe, routers, all the sanders over there in the corner, drill presses and more routing, uh, the little bandsaw joiner, Big bandsaw, planer, shop fan, another dust collector. Uh, over in this area, I got rid of one of my radial arm saws because my ham and trim saw is doing so much of the fine cross cut work I didn't need to. So I've got the trim saw and the radial arm saw, little sander over there. Both the big table saw and little table saw right there. A couple things that we did with my father-in-law that were real helpful. We took this old desk and he uh, rigged up some casters on the bottom so we can push uh, this all around the shop, store parts and whatever you're working on and wheel it everywhere, which is nice. And then on the big band saw, he helped me adjust the motor mount so we had better tension on the on the um, belts, which was an improvement. Getting, a, I think, a little less slippage there. And um, yeah, we're still, lots of wood stored up there. More stored up in the rafters over there. That's where all the myrtle is. Um, yeah, and every time we improve something, you know, it just improves the workflow a tiny bit and uh, it makes for an easier day. The other big thing that I've changed, which is a little controversial, is I've got my big dust collector over there and the little one behind me. And um, I used to have duct work run throughout the shop, but I did it uh, poorly. And neither of my dust collectors are really powerful enough to run through all the duct work, even with using blast gates. So I've consolidated where the machines are, and almost all the machines have a Rockler Quick Connect dust fitting. So like right here. So both dust collectors have a hose and this handle that quickly connects to wherever I want. And I found that through lots of testing that this machine um, just really needs to have one hose connected straight to a machine. That's the only way it's gonna really do its job. So I've got it rigged up so this machine can reach everything in this corner. And then in the other little corner, we've got the smaller dust collector 
that does joiner planer in big bandsaw. Um, so I've been liking that lately. I think it's catching all the chips easily and it's um, doing a better job of getting the, the tiny dust, especially with my cyclone here. So I took all the duct work down. Um, this is, seems to be working just fine. And uh, the shop has got more room to put stuff on the walls when I want to. So it was okay to punt and to admit that I had done that wrong and just try again like this for a while. And if I don't like it, I can always uh, try a different system later. Um, but it's going pretty good. I like this little quick connect things. So that's the shop update for summer 2019. Cheers.